The rubble was discovered in the year 1700 by a Frenchman. It's a bit wider, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Frenchman. What are you doing? What's it doing? and he saw the Indians were making a waterproof container from the beaten inner bark of a tree. And he was in a latex, saturating the, the beaten inner bark. Not what I'm no, Saturating no. the beaten inner bark with a latex, and then they, um, then they stuck the two pieces together and they made a waterproof container. Mm -hmm. He took the latex back to France. From doing research, it was proven that it could be made into waterproof shoes and clothes, rubber no. boots and raincoats. No. No. See? Rubber boots and raincoats. No. And it was a vitalizing process by Charles Goodyear and the rubber tire by John Dunlop. Right. That was responsible for the expansion in production and commercialization of the latex of the manufacturing of rubber. At that time in history, Manaus was the only part of Brazil and also the only part in the world that had rubber trees. And Manaus, from being an agricultural town, became a very prosperous town because they were able to dictate the prices of the ru of rubber. Every year they increased their prices. <laughs> it was during that time, they keep turning it. As they turn it, they throw the latex on this. Mm -hmm. It will fall down for this and fall back into the container. And they keep, and they heat the hot smoke congeals it. Mm -hmm. It's a ball of rubber. This is how the rubber mm -hmm. was congealed. Then it was taken off of this. Yeah. So it, it does not stick adhere to it. Okay. They take it off, and then they ship it like this. They take it to the factories. To the, no, to the buyers. Mm -hmm. Then the buyers cut it in half to see that nothing is inside to give it extra weight. Mm -hmm. And that's how to ship. And it's sent to England, reboiled or remelted, cleaned, and then processed and made into rubber products. Mm -hmm. Tell you, Cobra. Hey, I like you. See you. <laughs>